coffee is seriously the best. And you'll probably hear me say that for the rest of my YouTube journey. But one thing that I have every single day in my coffee, every day, which I almost have been for the last almost three years straight, is MCT oil. And I'm sure you're familiar with MCT oil and what it is and all the benefits, but have you heard of MCT oil powder? It's relatively new to the nutrition and supplement industry. I'm gonna shed some light on the differences between the two and why or when you would want to use one versus the other. Mm. Cacao, cacao, raw cacao. I have also raw cacao in my coffee pretty much every single day. Chocolate powder basically makes it really good. So as you already heard in the intro, I'm going over the differences between MCT oil and MCT oil powder. Uh, there are some differences. Uh, there is a host of different applications for both. And I'm going to share with you that in this video, if you don't know what MCT oil is, I'm not going to go into depth for the sake of time in this video, but I do have another video describing that. I'm going to put a card for you right up here. It's a video called coconut oil versus MCT oil. And it kind of sheds some light on the four different medium chain fats that are found that are MCTs and which ones are the best and which ones are the least effective. I'm going to say that right here right now is the C8 molecule is the most effective at turning into energy and ketones in the body. And C12 is the least effective and more likely to give you digestive discomfort. So that is important to know for, it's just to set some context up for further information coming along in this video. Let's go ahead and get right into it by covering uh, the pros and cons of MCT oil. Remember, I'm not going over the benefits of MCT oil, just uh, these different forms. So starting with MCT oil, let's get into the pros. A big pro for MCT oil is the fact that most of the research done on medium chain triglycerides or these medium chain fats is done or has been done with MCT oil. There's very limited research when it comes to MCT oil powder. A lot of the studies and the research, the data is on this. So that's a pro. You know for a fact that when you're taking this, you're getting what it you're getting what you are wanting to get, which is the energy, perhaps the ketones, perhaps the cravings to turn off, perhaps the thermogenic effect, having a more thermogenic fat in your life, in your diet. Okay, so first off, we're already off to a good start. Another pro is that it's pretty pure, and you could technically say that the pure form of this is coconut oil, which is true, but this is just one ingredient. There's nothing to, you know, to be manipulated here. There's no flavorings, there's no additives, there's no binders, there's no stabilizers, just uh, one ingredient, coconut oil. Another pro is that it's super easy to pour over your food or to use in recipes. So you can use MCT oil for cooking, there's a con to that though, as long as it's light cooking. The smoke point for MCT oil is 320 degrees Fahrenheit, so anything below that, you can bake with it, you can lightly saute things with it, uh, but you know, in my experience, I love making salad dressings with MCT oil or simply just pouring it over my food to add some fat, to add some calories, to add some energy. Now let's get into the cons of MCT oil. Number one, it's pretty obvious, it's an oil. So it's kind of hard to carry around and travel with. Now they do, some companies do have MCT oil in little to-go packets. What I've personally done when traveling or when being out of the house all day when I was really on the keto train was I would use empty vanilla extract bottles and just pour this in there and keep it in my pocket or in my car. Now that works, but again, you have the, the you're vulnerable to leakage with that and to it getting on different things. Now, if the oil gets on your skin, that's fine. It's coconut oil, just rub it in, your skin's gonna like it. But if this gets on your shirt, so here's another con. This is over the past three years of having butter coffee almost every single day, the amount of shirts and pants and shorts that I have ruined by getting a drizzle of this on your shirt, on my shirt, is, is ridiculous. Literally dozens of times. If you get this on your shirt, you need to take it off and wash it right away. If you let it dry, it will not come out. It's going to stay there even after you wash it, if you let it dry. So that kind of sucks. That's a con. It's a little messy. It's hard to carry around with. Another con is that it's not water soluble. It's a fat. So when you pour it into your coffee or into your beverage, it's going to float and sit at the top. That's why we blend butter coffees. That's why we blend these things. So it does need, you know, a little extra step in terms of actually being able to consume it, which is blending it, vigorously shaking it, you know, if you're going to be using it in a beverage. So that's kind of a downside. Uh, another con is that too much of it especially if you're new to consuming MCTs, 
is that it can hurt your stomach or call give you what's called disaster pants, which basically means you'll shit your pants probably. So I've never had that happen with me. Fortunately, a lot of people in the keto community have, but if you do get a stomach ache or digestive discomfort when consuming MCT oil, even if it's a little bit, that might be because of a really cheap MCT product. So for example, a lot of MCT oils on the market are really high in C12. Remember in the beginning, I told you that's the cheapest, I told you that that's the least effective MCT at turning into energy. It's more likely to cause di digestive discomfort. But also, here's the thing, is that it's the cheapest of the MCTs to produce and to extract. It's found in abundance. For example, C8, I believe is only, the C8 molecule is only 6% of coconut oil. It's either 6 or 8%. But C12 is something like 30%. So you can see how it's a lot cheaper to manufacture. So these companies use that and dilute their MCT oil. Technically, yes, you're getting 100% pure MCT oil, but what MCTs, okay? <clears throat> so that was just a quick side note on why you may be getting digestive discomfort uh, if you have MCT oil. But even if you're having a good clean one, too much of it can have uh, some digestive discomfort. So that's a con. And then another con, like I mentioned, is that you can use it for cooking, but only on low heat. Now let's get into some of the benefits. Uh, some of the now let's get into some of the pros and cons of MCT oil powder. Mm. It's just a little bit too good. You know what I'm saying? When something's just too good, you just can't put it down. You drink it too fast, and then it's gone just like that. MCT oil powder. Now, for those who don't know, uh, just to briefly explain how they make it, because it's important to know in, the, in terms of context for this conversation, the way they make MCT oil powder or the way that they take a liquid and turn it into a solid is through a process called spray drying. Now, they take the oil, okay, in this case, the MCT oil, and in order to spray dry or turn it into a solid, it needs a carrier fiber. Now, here is a con, even though I'm gonna cover the pros first, this, this ties in with the cons, is that it does need to have a fiber attached to it, okay? So the MC2 oil is bound to a carrier fiber, goes through a process called spray drying, and voila, here we have a powder that we can consume. That's important to know for the cons. But before we get there, let's, let's, let's cover the pros. It's a powder, so it's convenient, easy to travel with and super easy to mix in. You don't need to worry about blending anything. You don't need to worry about, you know, a lot of cleanups. All you simply need is a spoon, scoop it out, put it into your beverage and mix it up. So it's super convenient to take around, easy to just throw this in your gym bag and put it in your shaker bottle for pre-workout or whatever, or whatever you need. So that's a big, big benefit to this. Uh, another benefit is that it's perhaps easier to digest. So even if you have trouble consuming a good, clean, you know, proper MCT oil, you might want to try an MCT oil powder. The fact that it's bound to a fiber and does have some fiber in it, the fact that it's in powder form might be less intense on the stomach and a lot of people find it easier to digest. And again, since it's a powder, I already mentioned it's easy to mix into your liquids, but it's also easy to add to other recipes. Waffle mix, pancake mix. Well, actually, I'm pretty sure no keto people here are having waffle or pancake mix. But smoothie bowls, soups, stews, Keto waffles, maybe, I don't know. It's just really easy to throw into anything. Two more pros I want to mention is that number one, instead of giving an oily texture like the MCT oil would, which I forgot to mention, could be a pro or a con depending on your preference. MCT oil does leave the beverage oily, right? Obviously, because it's an oil. Even if you blend it, there's still an oily texture. MCT oil powder, on the other hand, gives it a creamy. You know, it's kind of like a non-dairy creamer. So if you don't do dairy and you want a powdered creamer, you know, there's coconut creamers and stuff like that. But honestly, this would be an awesome just kind of substitute for a non-dairy powdered creamer because of the, of, the, of, the, of the texture. Now, also another pro is that you get flavors, which is awesome. Now, you want to make sure, or at least my personal preference is uh, I don't like to consume artificial sweeteners. Not that they're going to kill you or anything, but I just choose personally to avoid them. So when I'm looking for an MCT oil powder, for example, this one from Perfect Keto, this flavor is matcha. And if you want to see a full review on this specific product, I have it on my channel. I'll put a card right here. And the matcha flavor is from exactly what you would expect. Organic ceremonial grade matcha green tea powder, uh, along with a little bit of stevia leaf extract. So very clean, kind of simple ingredients that fit my personal preference and lifestyle. So if you are getting flavors, you know, 
I personally would go for things that if it's chocolate, you know, rock a cow. If it's vanilla, vanilla bean. If it's a fruit flavor, just, you know, some organic fruit, uh, dried powder, freeze dried fruit powder or something like that. So you can get flavors, which will make it more palatable. I'm sure a chocolate one inside the coffee would be super, super good and different things like that. Now quickly, let's get into the cons of the MCT oil powder because there are a few that we need to pay attention to. First con I wanna mention is what I mentioned in the beginning with the MCT oil is that there is limited research on MCT oil powder. Do we know for a fact that we're getting the same benefits in the powder as we are in the oil that's been proven to have these thermogenic benefits, the cognitive benefits, the energetic benefits? We don't know for a fact, but we can assume Okay, and we can feel it, we can experience it, but that is something that's important to note. Another con is that it is more susceptible to being manipulated, it's more processed. And in companies, when they're making MCT oil powders, there's a lot of, there's more room for error in there, but there's also more room to scam you out of your money and to add fillers and binders and unnecessary ingredients. For example, I mentioned that MCT oil, the oil during the process of becoming a powder, needs a carrier fiber. What fiber are they using? Acacia fiber is one that I personally like. Acacia fiber, uh, some data suggests that it can be good for the gut. It you know, has been used uh, medicinally in different traditions and, and, and cultures. It's found in Pakistan, India, Africa, places like that. And the one that I'm using from Perfect Keto, if you look at the ingredients here, you can see that the ingredient list contains acacia fiber, which is exactly what they're using as the carrier fiber. So it will be listed in the ingredients. Now, there are other companies that are not using a good clean fiber like that. For example, let's look at Quest Nutrition, their MCT oil powder, and I'm a fan of Quest. I'm not here dissing them. I have some of their products in, in my pantry right now, uh, but their MCT oil powder is not one of them. For example, MCT oil is, MCTs is their first ingredient. The second ingredient is corn fiber. So it's probably a GMO corn fiber. If you are okay with that, that's fine. But let's look next. The next ingredient is caseinate. So there's casein in there. Does it need to be in there? I don't know. So if you have dairy allergies, you're really sensitive to casein, that might not be the best option. Then the next ingredient after that is sunflower lecithin, a finder, uh, 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 bleh, a binder, a filler, a stabilizer. I don't know exactly its purpose in there. And then the last ingredient, silicon dioxide. Again, I don't know why it's in there. It's more just like proving my point here. It's more easy to add fillers and binders. You know, how much, how many MCTs are we actually getting in that powder and these other powders that have all these unnecessary ingredients? I don't know. It's something to look out for. It's a con. Going based off that, another con is that, you know, it does require a fiber. So if you look at the nutrition facts here, they're actually pretty good. It's only 70 calories per scoop per serving, which is awesome. Uh, but if you look, there is one gram of fiber, one carbo gram of carbohydrate per serving. So if you're someone who's doing intermittent fasting uh, and you like to have some fats, like a modified fast, then I don't know if this would be the best way to go. I would probably rather go with a little bit of MCT oil during a fast. That's okay in my book to hold you over, to give you some energy. I'm fine with that. Um, the powder, you know, you make your own judgment call for that if you want to use this during fast because it does have, you know, different properties, especially with the fiber. And going back to the whole manipulation thing, it's also important to look at what balance of powder to MCTs is there in the powder that you're buying. So for example, a way to tell is if you look at the nutrition facts again here, one serving is 11 grams weight, okay? Now there's seven grams of fat in there. That's about 65, 70% of the total serving of MCTs, leaving about 30, 35% powder. That's not bad of a rate. That's not a bad ratio. 70 to 30. I'm getting 70% MCT, 70 grams of it. That's fine. Some companies may have 50, 50 or maybe, you know, 30 or I'm sorry, maybe 70% fiber, 30% MCTs. And then it becomes a marketing thing. So you got to watch out for it. Like I said, more likely to be manipulated. So which one should you use? I gave you enough information. Hopefully you can make that decision for yourself. But if you're someone like me, who's home all the time, this, and you know, has access to a blender and you make your little uh, you know, your, your keto drinks and your, and your smoothies and stuff at home, this would be the better option in my opinion, but this is awesome in a pinch. I still love this stuff. Now, 
Those are the pros and cons. I'm going to share with you my personal experience. Having taken MCT oil for almost every, you know, regularly for the last coming up on three years, and then having MCT oil powder for the last few months and experimenting with it, to be honest, both are great. Both give me energy. Both help me turn off cravings. I love using this to hold me over to my next meal, something low calorie, something that's not going to put me, you know, in a surplus if I don't want to be in a surplus. But to be honest, I do notice more of a energetic and cognitive boost having the MCT oil, having MCTs in its pure original form more than I do with the powder. Not to say I don't get benefit with this. I do. I have a review on it. Everything in that, in that review is honest and open, of course, and all of these are my own thoughts and, and, and I'm being honest with you here. But again, being honest with you here, I do like MCT oil better. I just feel, you know, a little bit more, a little bit more, uh. A little bit more, yeah, a little bit more cacao. So that's something to know. That's just me personally. But if you're always on the go, you're making these drinks at work, you know, you just want something easy to just mix in some water while you're on the go, great, do this. If you're in a pinch, I use this. I personally think it's good to have both in the pantry. Obviously, you're not gonna use both every single day. And you just, you know, pick and choose for what's going on for the day. That's what I like to do. So that's essentially the end of the topic of conversation in this video, but I do wanna give you some, a couple more tips on how to pick MCT products because it is important. Number one, when you're picking an MCT oil, make sure it's just one ingredient, MCT oil, sourced from ideally coconuts. You can get MCT oil that's sourced from palm oil as well, but I personally prefer getting the, getting my MCT that's sourced from coconuts. The palm oil industry is, is not very good for the environment, not very good for uh, orangutans and things like that. If you look up palm oil industry, it's not that great. I'd rather support the coconut industry and uh, I'd rather just have it be sourced from coconuts. Also, when you're buying MCT products, it's important, at least in my opinion, to look for a good blend of MCTs. The C8 molecule and the C10 molecule are very uh, effective MCTs. If it has a lot of C12 in there, you know, you're not getting the best bang for your buck and that's shown to be the least efficient MCT out of the four. So for example, this MCT oil from Perfect Keto is a blend of C8, 70% C8 and 30% C10. That's fantastic. You can also get just exclusively C8 oil, just caprylic acid. That's a little bit more expensive, about five bucks more per bottle, but I do notice a difference with that as well. That pure C8 gives me a more cognitive boost, I noticed. And uh, same thing with in, in regards to the powder. Make sure it's you know C8, C10, not the cheap C12 that's you know gonna make you possibly shit yourself. So that's that for you know picking an MCT oil and that applies to the powder as well. But specifically for the powder, make sure the fiber source is one that you agree with and one that you like. Make sure there's no artificial uh, sweeteners if you choose to avoid that. I'm not saying they're the devil. I'm not saying they're gonna kill you if you have them every now and then. Uh, but if you choose to avoid that, you know, just be aware of the ingredients and what you want to fit into your life or what you, you know, prefer. Now, with that being said, if you do wanna check out the MCT oil powder and oil that I prefer to use, there are links in the description. Uh, again, from Perfect Keto, I get my, I supply my MCT oil from them now. And the MCT oil powder, they have the best on the market in terms of just, you know, quote unquote, clean ingredients and nothing unnecessary in there. Every ingredient serves a purpose and they have really good flavors. My favorite is the matcha, but I've heard amazing things about the vanilla flavor, the chocolate flavor. So it's not a sponsored post in any way, uh, but I do have and I do use affiliate links, which are down below for you to check out these products. And they do come with a discount code if you want to try them. So I believe it's either 10 or 15% off your first order with Perfect Keto. Try some of this if you like. Um, you know, I hope I was able to give you value in this video. And I hope that you are now able to make an educated buy on which one you want to include in your life if you choose to include them. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. If you found value, make sure to hit that thumbs up button because it means a lot to me and it really helps the channel grow. Uh, share this video if you like. And if you want to get notified every time I put out more content, uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button, click the bell, punch the bell, lick the bell you know, go on a date with them, do a bunch of things to that bell so you get notified when I go live and when I upload new videos. I love you, thank you so much. Any questions, drop them in the comment below and I will see you guys in the next video.